Hello, my angels. Welcome back to my channel. Ah. Okay, before anything else, let's start with an affirmation. You are a shining star. No matter where you are right now, stop, go look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am a shining star. You are. And I believe in you and I love you so much. And yeah, I, first of all, I wasn't supposed to film a video this week. I honestly had such a crazy week last week, especially with like YouTube and other things that I'll talk about later in the video, that I wasn't going to film anything. But I'm just so excited. I have so much to celebrate and I wanna share with you guys that I was like, let's just do like an impromptu video, which is what I'm doing right now. Before I get into anything, I wanna say that this video is proudly sponsored by me. So a few weeks ago, I put out a journal for empaths and artists. It's a guided journal. To <gasps> oh my God! Let's try this again. I'm so sorry, where was I before my vase? I just like look over and I see my vase like falling and I'm like, ah, it fell, but that's fine. What was I saying? Okay, so we're currently Friday and yeah, this video is sponsored by me. I put out this journal for empaths and creatives, and a bunch of you guys have already gotten it and left me such kind reviews, and I truly made this for you guys, so. But yeah, it's a journal for empaths and creatives. There's a lot of good exercises and prompts, and I also have more prompts for you today that I'm gonna share, which is really cool. I thought that we would just do like a chill sit down video. Don't know how long it's gonna be. Not gonna do like a ton of edits. I'm really loving like this format lately where I'm just talking to you guys, and it's like we're having dinner. I don't have dinner, but like as if I'm just talking to a friend. Um, so yeah, if you guys do want to get a copy, link down below. But yeah, anyway, I wasn't planning on filming this week because last week was so crazy. And like I said, I'll get into that in the next part of the video. Stuff with my apartment, um, stuff around like YouTube, and just a lot of different things. But the real reason I really, really wanted to film a video today, even though I normally do it on Tuesdays, is because my first ever single, my first ever song is out right now. You guys are the first to know and I'm just so excited because if you've been following my channel for a while, I started making music last year. I had never made music in my life. I played a little bit of piano, but when I was going through like my divorce and a really difficult time, I decided that I was gonna try to use a new medium and express myself through that and you can even go back like a year from now and see the videos when I first started making music and it took a year but I've created an EP called Tower Moments and it's an experimentation in pop, <laughs> in spoken word and the first song off of that EP is out right now. So yeah, the EP is called Tower Moments and it's basically times in my life when I was going through a really difficult time um, where I turned to music and I wanted to create something out of those difficult times. So a lot of the songs are like angsty, <laughs> salty, but also a lot of them are about heartbreak and just trying to find beauty in all of that. Um, the song that I just put out today is in French and in English, which is really important to me because my life is in French and English. So I want you guys to go in the link down below, listen to the song, please, if you guys love me, um, because I really put so much work into it. I collaborated with um, a producer named Aria Wood, who's fantastic, and I think it'll be a little unexpected. The song is pretty dark. It was the first song off the EP, and I even contemplated like not putting it out because I was like, wow, like, I was just so like in that moment, feeling so much, and you know, I've grown so much since then, but like, musically and as a person, and so I'm not in those feelings anymore. But I know that a lot of you guys tell me that often, you know, you're going through breakups and things. And I think that it can be helpful to use those feelings and channel it into a song. So go listen to this song and then come back to the video. And I'm going to talk about it and also like some prompts for you guys, how my week has been. So please go listen to it and then come back here. It's like four minutes long. Link down below. Go listen. It's called I Know Where You Live. The more I think about it, the more angry I get. So I try not to think about it. But it keeps rearing its fuck. King. Okay. <laughs> I also just listened to it 
again. And I just want to talk about this song and like how raw it was when I wrote it. And also the process of self-producing, putting out music yourself, because I know a lot of you guys were budding musicians. And also like, if you would have asked me two years ago if I was going to make music, I would have been like, probably not. Um, but yeah. Hold on, it's hot as balls in here. It's like, it's like, what are we in October and it's so hot? Global warming, am I right? Anyway. So yeah, basically, if you follow my channel for a while, and this is why I wanted to announce it on here first before Instagram or anything. Um, last year, at the end of like my relationship, I was going through a lot of feelings of betrayal and I was sharing all of those with you guys online and I literally spent like the worst summer in my life like I don't know if you guys know that song Cruel Summer it's a cruel, cruel, cruel summer I would literally spend my days crying into pillows and walking around Paris just walking and walking and not knowing what to do with all these feelings and I had this like fantasy when I was walking around thinking about this betrayal that I went through like like, I know where you live, because I used to live there with you, and I know where I can find you, and I just want to walk to you. And I had, like, this fantasy of, like, all the things I would say, like, if I could see them. And I really wanted to take, through this song, a journey of confronting the person that betrayed you, and just, like, having these dark feelings, because it was really something that I grappled with, having dark feelings, as somebody that was, like, so positive, and... It's just like, I know where you live, I might walk there, but then this other part of it, it's like, but I also remember the beautiful times, like when we were 19 in Italy, like, you know, all my friends saying like, oh, you dodged a bullet, it's fine. But in reality, me knowing, like, that this is a huge loss for me. And so I made this song, when I first wrote it, it was a lot more like, I know where you live, like a lot more like peppy. And then when I worked with my producer, it just became something a lot more dark. <laughs> but that I kind of like, like it's kind of giving like fashion show, like I know where you live. And I think that's what's beautiful as well when you collaborate with somebody, like when I collaborated with Aria, which I really needed to do because I had never produced music before, um, is you sort of take a mix of their skills and yours and you can create something way different than you ever imagined. And, you know, we made the song and then I wanted to collaborate with um, someone who did videos and I found this amazing girl on Instagram um, and the, the video for the song is going to come out on Tuesday um, but I wanted to release the song first so people can sort of like listen to it without the, you know, all the images <sighs> so popular, no kidding I sort of wanted to put out the song first just because I didn't want to split like the I didn't want to split the, um, and this is like a tip that I learned, I didn't want to split the uh, um, the views in half between like the song and the video but the video itself is so freaking cool because we really collaborated on like imagery and trying to make it like more fun and light and like a jokey and not just like because <laughs> this is one of the things I was grappling with is like I think the song is very powerful but it's also giving like killer vibes <laughs> and I remember like sending it to my mom and my sister and being like is this like too creepy um, but also when I was talking about my friend the other day, she was like, are you nervous to put out music? And I thought of something that I think is really pertinent, which is, in my life, I want to be somebody that makes things. I want to be somebody that puts out things consistently, whether that's paintings, music. I just want my identity to be somebody that is an artist that makes things. And so whether those things resonate with me now or not, because the process is very long to create something, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be creating a new thing. Like I have two other songs as well coming out. Um, I mean, I'm announcing this next week on my Instagram, but me and my best friend are starting a rock band and our first show is in November. Like there's so much going on. Um, so I'm not nervous about sharing. And I think that the more that you do things where you could face failure, the more you gain confidence, the more that you stick up for yourself to a boss, the more that you say like, hey, I'm going to try this new thing I never tried before, and you just do it, the more you become fearless because it becomes second nature to you to do new things, you know? So if you guys have listened to this song, I would love to hear what you think down below. It's a first... My God, I'm trying to make a YouTube video. <laughs> it's a 
first time I've ever tried to make something and the more that I learn, the more I'm able to produce myself and so obviously, you know, now that I can produce myself, it's even closer to what I imagine. Um, but I'm just really proud of myself for just saying like, I want to express those feelings right now. So yeah, I just want to say like, even though the song is salty, I don't have any like grudges against my ex. Like I worked through those through music, but at the time I was fucking going through it. And I wanted to walk to his house and be like, what about us? What about us? What about trust, babe? Got to do, got to do with it, babe. I wanted, I'll probably share it on Instagram tomorrow with like a little teaser of the video, or maybe tonight. We'll see how we feel. Having a Halloween get together tonight, which is exciting. Um, and I feel like the old me would have been like stressed, like I need to share it on YouTube and Instagram and everything right now because I need everyone to know right now. But in reality, I've realized that like, if you have intentions to want to put things out there, you don't need to force it. Just keep going. You know, like maybe this song won't do amazingly. I don't know. Maybe it will. Who the fuck knows? It is a Halloween song, so we'll see. Um, but maybe the next one will. And then there's going to be a next one and a next one. And I think that's why, as I'm getting older and growing, I learned that that is my purpose with this channel, that is my purpose in general, is I want to inspire myself and be a leader so that I can help other people to allow themselves to put themselves out there. You know what I mean? Like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Because at the end of the day, we always think that people are watching us and judging us, but no one really cares. The only, <laughs> the only reason why people might care is either they like it, what you're doing, or the fact that you're doing a lot is threatening to them because, <laughs> because it's forcing them to realize how much they're doing or not. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I have a lot of people talk to me all the time about like, oh, I wanna, I wanna try to do YouTube, but I'm afraid what my friends will think. In reality, they're not thinking about you. And if they did, it's probably for like 30 seconds. But what you can gain from putting yourself out there and expanding is so much more than what you can lose. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna check and see if this is recording because I'm not sure. Yes. Anyway, I'm gonna put the jacket back on because this is like my first song coming out look. Do you know what I mean? But I didn't take in consideration how hot my studio is right now. Yeah, I'm so excited for you guys to see the music video. I'm gonna put that out on Tuesday. And as a visual artist, like I just put so much thought into the stories as well. And that's something that I was talking about with my band that we're starting is we want, I'm doing it with another girl who's a visual artist and she's gonna play the bass. I'm gonna do the guitar and the synth and how much we want it to be just like such a, like a visual experience and be like, fuck yeah, punk rockers. Do you know what I mean? And since, starting this band, everything is just sort of falling into place really quickly. Like we're having our first show at the Silencio, which is, well, it's not really a show, I should chill. Um, another band, the Oracle Sisters, is having like a special night and they invited us to come play a song or two. So that's cool. And it's at David Lynch's Secret Club. And um, what's really cool is I like looked up David Lynch's club and like Grimes has played there and like Lana Del Rey and I'm like, what the hell? Like, what the hell? So, first song is out there. Very cool Halloween party tonight. If you guys like it, please let me know what you think down below. As well as if you do, you can like make a TikTok to dancing it. Is it asking too much? <laughs> you guys can also like go fucking dance to it. But if you do like it and you want to do something creative, I'll definitely share it. Um, and let me know what you think down below. So yeah, anyway, I have two more songs coming. And um, I want to get them out by the end of the year, have music videos for them. They're sort of like these dark fairy tales, as you'll see when the music video comes out. But I sort of want to put them out there because I just move so quickly and I feel like I'm already ready to move in a new direction uh, with my band. If you follow me on Instagram, like Oranges in the Snow, this one goes out to my new boyfriend, like all of these songs. Um, and we're going to do some shows in Paris soon, so you guys should definitely come to those. Um, and also I'm able to produce myself. but. Um, I just, I just want to like quickly talk about the process of all of this because I'm new to all this. I'm like a DIY bitch. Like I love doing things myself. Like my journal, 
um, my poetry book, I like to do things myself because I like to learn. Like when you do things yourself, you really learn. So I feel like I got lucky in a sense because I decided I wanted to make music. I had written some songs. Um, I had used GarageBand. I had never tried to produce before. So I had made these little demos and then in one of my YouTube videos I said, oh, like if there's any producers that want to help me um, like make this a little more professional, um, reach out and Aria reached out and um, we were able to, so basically like I would send her the songs and then we'd work together on Zoom and I'd be like, you know, I like this here, that, like I just didn't have the tool set yet to make it what I like. Um, but what I would say is if you're just starting out in music, me giving advice as if like, <laughs> I've been doing this for years. But if you're just starting out, like make your demos, like do the best you can. And you can honestly put those out. Like I like the demos that I made too. They're a different world, but I think they're still interesting. And um, you know, you can find like producers that you don't have to live nearby, like me and her work together on Zoom. Um, and it took like maybe like a month to finish the songs. But me, being the visual queen that I am, I was like, oh no, I absolutely need a music video for each song. And I found this girl who animates, who's amazing, like she has exposed like Art Basel, like she's such an up and coming cool artist. Um, and it took like us four or five months to do like the music video because she animated everything from scratch. Like there's like a purple palace in the video, like it's so freaking cool. Not everyone's vibe, like my mom said she didn't like it. <laughs> but um... Obviously, like, that's just, you know, people have different styles. Um, so I would just encourage you guys, make your demos, try the best that you can with what you have. And that's honestly very punk rock. You know, like me and my friend Celia, who I'm starting the band with, we're talking about the fact that, like, we don't need things to sound like super professional. We want to just have full, complete control and then maybe get things, like, mixed and mastered. So having things mixed and mastered costs maybe, like, a hundred bucks. And basically when you finish with your demo, you send it to somebody and they just up the levels so that when you put them out on Spotify, um, that it sounds very professional. I don't know, like maybe in the future if I, I, I am going to continue doing music, like it would be beneficial to have like a label or things like that. But for now, I'm really excited about the prospect of doing things myself. So I just wanted to share that. If you have any questions about like making music and things like that, let me know down below. Let me know how you like the song. And I just want to catch you guys up a little bit about last week. Like, last week was crazy. Okay, before anything else, can we talk about the fact that I can't keep a plant alive? I'm supposed to be getting a cat and I can't even keep a plant alive. I got these because in my old house in Michigan where I grew up and I lived there some, until I was like 10, we had, a, we had a tree and it had a bunch of these on there. And so the smell reminds me of my old house. I actually heard that smell is one of the most important memory things that we have. Um, but I just can't keep them alive. I water them, I put them in the sun. So yeah, there's that. Also, speaking of music just in general, Taylor Swift's Midnights. You know what's crazy? Is like, I listened to it at first and I was like, okay. Like, I liked her other albums better, but she's the type of musical artists that really grows on me. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I like this one song, but I'm just like listening to it nonstop now. I like Midnight's and I like Karma, and I like The Snow on the Beach. Don't know where Lana went on that song, but I like it all the same. And I also like, um, you're on your own kid. But you know what's crazy is I had the same thing when I listened to Driver's License for the first time by Olivia Rodrigo. I was like, what's the hype about? Like, it's a nice song, but it's just like a, a song. But it's the type of songs that like, <laughs> they just get you, you know what I mean? You're listening to them over and over. Um, so yeah. So anyway, let's talk about last week. I wasn't gonna post this week because last week <laughs> I spent like, okay. If you guys watch my channel, you probably already know. But I put out a video Everything was going good. It was in like the mid stats. I'm like happy about it. And I get these notifications at like 7 a.m. Shayna, I can't watch your video. What's happening to your video? And I'm like, what? Like, especially if you're a YouTuber, you can relate to this, but like when you put out a video, it's like a release. You're like, okay, I put it out there. I can relax for like one day before the grind starts again. <laughs> um, but 
I went and clicked on my video and yeah, it was saying like, your video can't play. And I'm like, it already had like 10,000 views. And like, I'm a smaller-ish channel. So that's like half of what I would get in a week as well as it was a sponsored video. So if it wasn't any other video, it would be like uh, annoying, but since it's a sponsored video, this is like YouTube behind the scenes, you guys probably don't care, but you know, brands decide to work with you based on the number of views. So I contacted YouTube and I'm like, hey girl, hey YouTube, um, what's going on? And I get like a robot telling me like, oh, we don't know what's going on. You should re-upload your video. So I had to re-upload it, start from scratch. Of course, the video is now in the last slot. And, but this took me like an extra two days to sort out and I sort of got like really down because I was like oh my god like I have zero control <laughs> and this could happen like any time like there was a part of me that was like what if every time I put up a video now it has this problem like I could put this video up and then tomorrow it could just be decide not to play and I was talking to my friend who was like an Instagram influencer and she's like yeah like that's the thing that sucks is like feeling like you know, this could all go away tomorrow. And it just kind of confirmed to me that I want to like branch out a lot more. Like my idea is, you know, I, I've been trying to do that, but it's a lot of work. Like I have like, some things out, like I have a poetry book and this book, um, you know, I have a Patreon and I try to do a bunch of different things so that I am more secure. But also like the way that I promote those things is through YouTube. So it's like, okay. Um, but I think that next year I'm going to put out some more journals. Um, you guys have been asking me for like some blank journals. So since I do art, I was like, well, maybe I'll put out some blank journals next year. And I'm just trying to like, not just exist so much online, but also create physical projects, for example, my band and things like that. And I think that's a lesson to anybody who is creating something, you know, online or anything is like, just remember that like the most important thing is where your sort of art lives and I just realized like how much like I just wasn't um thinking about the fact that like someone else has control over like where my art is living like where my community is and I'm like maybe I should start a newsletter I don't know so that was stressful last week as well as I realized I need to change apartments um which really sucks because <laughs> I what's great about where I live now and sorry, like this video isn't just gonna be like about me promoting my music and then bitching about things. I'm also gonna share with you guys some prompts. But I also think what's important in relationships, and I do see this as like a relationship is even though it's parasocial, um, is sharing sort of your difficulties too because we connect through adversity and vulnerability. And these are just some things I'm thinking about. So, um, <laughs> so another thing is with my apartment is like, I, I like living in small spaces and you know I rent this studio which is a beautiful and big studio that I'm so happy to have like I spend most of my time here it's also a practice space for me and my band um, and but you know I do have to pay two rents so I decided I would take a studio that's smaller that is close by so for my studio I pay like around 580 but the toilet is in the hallway and there's some new neighbors. We thought our neighbor drama was over, but apparently it's not. And um, there's also like people doing construction and they've just been leaving the toilets so disgusting. Like, I don't want to even tell you guys because if you're eating, but it's just like, I can't be like living there anymore. <laughs> so if you guys have an apartment, <laughs> no, if you guys like have any like leads, that's cool. Otherwise, like I do meditate and I tell myself that things are working out. Things have always worked out and the more that I move forward in life the more I'm like oh like I do trust because I know that every time I've needed something in the past and I've had faith and I've chosen faith over fear things work out but I will say when you wake up first thing in the morning and you have to use those toilets and they're disgusting you're just like Ugh, like it's not it's not the vibe and I contacted my landlord and like can we get a key on the toilet can we do something um yeah we'll see as well as like in my last video I opened up about relationships, so I stopped, right? And I was talking about how it's been difficult for me as somebody who has like an online uh, presence and also like a past, like, you know, I've been married and things like that to, um, to like date. And um, it's just like the same thing. Like, I feel like I tried apps out for the first time ever in my life. <laughs> what a roller coaster. 
I was talking to one person that I was like, oh, he's so cool. Like he plays the guitar and he just seemed like really nice. And he was definitely my type. And then he fucking ghosted me. <laughs> I don't know why. And <laughs> I feel like what I realized is like the apps aren't for me because I really would like to meet somebody in person. I'm like, how am I going to be this person? That's like, everything works out for me and have faith in every other area of my life. But when it comes to relationships, I'm like, mm, like I need to go you know? <laughs> so I truly believe that like when you are doing something that you love, that's when you find people that you can connect with. So I'm deleting that shit and I'm just gonna focus on my band, focus on my art, and then hopefully something beautiful will flow into my life. Like I'm a shooting star, shoo. But also I was talking to this, with this about my friend that like, I think that um, as someone that has a lot of Capricorn in their chart, and I had, um, we had like our annual Halloween meetup on Patreon, and this beautiful soul, Nicolette, read my chart, and she was like, holy crap, like you have so much Capricorn in your chart, like I have five houses in Capricorn or whatever, five moons, like whatever you call it, which means like I'm super ambitious, and like my sort of North Star is success, creativity, like all of that. Um, but I feel like I sort of have always told myself like, oh, like I don't have time for love. Like my art and my work comes first. But in reality, like I think that as somebody that, that does so much, like the more that you sort of have success in your own life and love the person that you are, the more you are sort of different than other people in a way because a lot of people just sort of want to do like the very minimum. And so you're sort of, pick of people is smaller because like I want to be with somebody that is ambitious and that you know leaves him like positivity and like that's already like <laughs> cutting half the people off you know and um yeah I just want to share that with you like guys like I share everything else because why the fuck should I pretend <laughs> why should I pretend that like everything's perfect when everything you know like I still have, ugh, I still have obstacles in life and um and I know that you guys do too. I feel like modern dating sucks. Um, and I, like my love language is definitely like quality time. So I always end up falling like for my friends, which is really bad. Um, Cause that never ends up working out anyway. But anyway, I don't know. I just wanted to share with you guys some of last week. There was some beautiful things last week too though. Um, I had band practice every Wednesday and Friday and that's really fun. I've been meaning to vlog a little bit, but I've just been really busy. And um, what else? Uh, we had our Halloween meetup, which is always really great on Patreon. I try to do meetups. Um, and we always start out by doing like these energy ceremonies and sort of trying to connect. And um, that was really nice. Uh, and then finding out that we get to do that show was really cool as well. So yeah. And then another thing was there was the Scorpio um, eclipse. And I'm really trying with friends to have time together that is elevated not just like oh we're hanging out and we're like just like talking about bullshit but really like how can we make this more magical more special for example we have a halloween party tonight um like how can we make every time that we're together because life is so short like memorable and that's how you make life seem longer so my friend Anne sent me some new prompts because i have so many prompts in like my book but i just wanted like some new prompts and we did them together. We had like a little, um, with a couple of my friends, it was very like last minute. We had a little uh, Scorpio eclipse ceremony. And I had learned that the Scorpio eclipse is a really good time. And even now, like it's still sort of happening, like sort of the residualness of that. Um, it's a good time to let go of things that are no longer serving you. And so um, I had some prompts that we did. We drew like little moons on our forehead and like howled at the moon and it was so much fun. But I thought that maybe we could end the video tonight, today with me sharing that with you guys um, because they were really helpful. Um, okay, so if you have your journals, maybe you even have this journal, um, I have some prompts for you guys um, that I think could really help you. So let's just get right into it. And these are to help you kind of figure out where you stand right now for like the next part of the year. So, moving into this new lunar cycle, do you have any new pre new or pre-existing intentions or goals? So, I wrote out that 
around like my band and things like that. I have so many things that I want to do and it's just so exciting. So I think whatever you think about, just try to follow what you can really feel joyful about. Because I think that when we feel joyful, we're manifesting like God-like energy and creativity. Like when you feel that, oh my God, I'm so excited to do that. That's what you should be doing. Always follow what excites. Okay, next question. Have you ever had a skill that you felt called to master? Have you ever had a skill that you felt called to master? Um, I feel like I have been called to master like public speaking and performance. Like I just feel like I was born to be a leader in some way and just like be fearless and inspire myself so I can inspire others. That's like the truth. Okay. I really like these questions. Like I really like that question, especially because it's like, sometimes we have like this little nudge in our heart and we're like, why, why would I do that? Like, what about that could serve me? But, and I was talking about this in my last video about around like tap dancing. I didn't know why I wanted to learn to tap at like 25. I was like, where the fuck would I learn to tap? Where am I gonna do that? But I really wanted to, and so I just let myself do it, and now I'm able to use those skills in our band, which is so cool, and I'm really proud of that. Okay, next is, what would it look like for you to face an area of your life that you have been avoiding? Girl, girl, what would it look like what would it look like for you to face an area of your life that you have been avoiding? <gasps> Come right for me, why don't you? I personally wrote out that I felt like I had been avoiding love for a long time or just like dating in general because I was afraid of like, oh, like if I actually try or put myself out there that like yeah. it's actually <laughs> going to be difficult. <laughs> but in reality, like, I don't know. <laughs> oh. Okay, next. Can you let go of any controlling or obsessive behavior that no longer serves you? Can you let go of any controlling or obsessive behavior that no longer serves you? Um, I feel like I used to be like really, not obsessive, but like I always second guess myself around choices. Like I'd be like, oh, like is this the right thumbnail? Or like, cause, cause especially, around like YouTube and posting online like I was talking about earlier it can feel like so often like you have such little control and my family can attest to this like I would always send them like oh, is this thumbnail better or is this thumbnail better and they'd be like girl like in reality it's so freeing when you realize that there is no wrong choice there are just choices you know and each choice takes us to a different outcome but an affirmation that I love is like there is no wrong choices because either of those thumbnails would have been fine. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, sure, maybe one would have like blown up or something like that, but like, it's chill. Like, it's not a big deal. And whether, even for me, like if I had stayed in the US, I'm sure that like, I would have still had a beautiful life. Who knows, maybe I would have kids or like, oh my God. But like maybe, um, I don't know, like my life would have been totally different, but it's not that my life here is better. I love my life, so I'm a little biased to my life. But I think that like there's a bunch of different paths you can go through, go down in life, and you don't have to stress out like is this the right decision? Because I think that as long as we're following our true north, for example, my true north is being a leader and creating and wanting to express myself, then I could have done that in the US, like I could have done that anywhere, you know what I mean? And so I think that when we take our the stress off in that way, it's really powerful. So that's just personally one of the things that I stopped obsessing about. I was like, bitch, stop spending like two hours like testing out different thumbnails. Like it's not a big deal. Okay, the next question. What in your life needs space to grow without you trying to control it? What in your life needs space to what in your life needs space to grow without you trying to control it? That's really good. What are we suffocating? Uh, my plants are dying. Um, 
I think for me, it's really been just like not stressing about relationships and like dating. Like I don't need to treat it like I do my projects. Like I am definitely somebody that is disorganized in my like domestic life. Like my spaces are always like messy. But when it comes to projects, I'm like, I'm printing out the calendars. I'm knowing when things are happening, when things are coming out because that's always worked for me. But like, you can't attack dating in the same way. Like there's something a lot more just like serendipitous about it. And so I think that I can just like, if I can let go, you know, that's me. Ooh, and the last question is very good. Also, can we get a, for Anne who sent these to us, we love you, Anne. Um, last question, what parts of yourself have been hiding in the shadows? I remember when I was like 18 or 19, I was doing a self-help book and it was asking like, what would you do if like you could start over and do anything? And at the age of 18, 19, I already felt like too old. It's not crazy. I was like, oh, I should have chosen this major, but I have chosen another major. And so it is too late for I. We must follow this until the end. Whereas like now, like all this time later, I'm starting a band, like really, I mean, not late in life, but like still, you know? And so I think that I realized by doing like those prompts and there's a lot of, not to always bring it back to this, but there are a lot of prompts like that in the book. Um, like asking yourself, like what parts of you are you trying to repress because you feel like if you acknowledge them, then you would have to do something about it. You know what I mean? Like even if it's like a small thing, like, oh, I've always dreamed to do dance. Why don't you just try it? And maybe you don't know right away what you're going to do with it. But who knows, maybe down the line, like something will come up. It's like they always say, success is when opportunity meets readiness. So get yourself ready for something and then one day an opportunity might arise, you know? If suddenly an opportunity comes up and you're like, oh wait, like if I had known three months ago I would have started practicing, you're like, well fuck, I missed the boat on that, you know what I mean? So what parts of you have you been keeping in the shadows because maybe you're ashamed or because you feel like no one will care? If you care, people will care. People care about passionate people. I said that wrong. People care about the things that people are passionate about. If I were talking about airplanes and I was so passionate about it, then people would be passionate because like, oh well, she's excited about it. It's the same around like telling interesting stories. Like a story is interesting because of the content of the story. A story is interesting because of the feeling that you put into the story. Like the other day, this is crazy. This is crazy. I was walking down the street and all of a sudden I see a crow fly out of a window with a carton of eggs and I was like, what the fuck is that? And all of a sudden it drops one of the eggs on the ground and the, the egg explodes on the ground like right in front of me and there was a girl walking in the other direction and we looked at each other and like, what was that? <laughs> like, what was that? It was so weird. But I think what I liked most about that interaction was like, I'm never gonna see that girl again. But like we had this moment of like, we saw something like super strange and like it brought us together in like those two split seconds. And it was very rare, you know? And because I feel passionate about that story, it becomes more interesting. But if I was like, yeah, like I saw a crow fly and like, whoa, oh my God, like no one cares, you know? Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, ask yourself like, what are, and you don't have to act on it right now, but just realizing what that is is already an act in itself because you're not lying to yourself anymore, you know? So, anyway, another week of me not wanting to take a break and then me still posting, but I was really excited about all these projects, my song coming out. Thank you so much if you listen to it. And I just want to hear what you think about it. And um, yeah, I also feel like I have a lot to share as far as like prompts goes and if I do learn something, I always think it's great to share it because I just really value like the connection that we have so much and being able to be a part of your week. So anyway, I am going to be posting next Tuesday the music video. Please watch it even if you already listened to the song because I think that it's really beautifully done and I'm just so excited for the future. Never forget, never forget, 
that your life is so precious and that of all the other people that could have been born, you were born. You're a shining star. And if no one else believes in you, I fucking believe in you. I believe in you. And you're so special. And the desires that you have in your heart are there for a reason. And even if you take some small steps today to move towards them, then that's already so big, you know? And then tomorrow you can do a little bit more, you know? Okay. Well, if you made it to the end, just please leave me a comment of what you felt, thought about the song and be honest. I'm chill, whatever you think. And um, I also, like I said, I have a journal out um, with a bunch of amazing prompts. I made it for you guys. Um, there was a review that was like, don't be fooled by like the crying face because it's a really positive journal. I just, the journal is called I Love Being Sensitive and I think the crying is beautiful. And I love this book. It's in hardcover and softcover. Also, if you did get um, a copy already, please leave me a review because it definitely helps and it encourages as well. And I also have a Patreon where you can support what I'm doing. I do podcast episodes on there. As long as we have meetups and Zoom parties. And it's just a great way to be a part of like the community in a more active way, I guess. So anyway, you can follow me on Instagram for more updates. And I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching, for holding space for me, and just letting me be a part of your day. So anyway, me and my half-dead plant love you. And <laughs> have a beautiful... Beautiful week. Bye.